What's up everyone? JC here from Investagrams. In the last video, we gave you an introduction on how REITs work. Uh, we discussed paano ba ito gumagana, ba't ba merong REITs, anong may expect natin dito. So I hope na nakatulong yung unang video just to give us a grasp on how, how this new asset class in the Philippines would work and what we can expect out of it. Ngayon, meron ng paparating na IPO. Ito yung Ayala REIT, di ba? So the A REIT. Now, in order to analyze kung okay ba si A REIT, we're gonna look at its term sheet. So magkakaroon tayo ng overview, ano bang mga assets ang laman ni A REIT, ano yung average yields or range ng yields nitong A REIT na to, ano yung mga other terms na kailangan natin malaman. So dadaanan natin yan today. And take note sa analysis video na to, nung ginawa namin ni Ray to, wala pa yung final offer price. So we were just basing on the range of 25 to 30 kung papakinggan nyo mabuti yung video. But now, alam na natin na 27 yung price range. So, i-adjust nyo na lang. Kung meron kami mga sinabi na ang assumption is 30 range, i-adjust na lang natin to what's, what's out there now, which is 27. Moving on. No? So, we're now going more towards yung ARIT discussion natin. So, just a glimpse no, of Ayala Land Inc.'s uh, 2019 revenues. So 85% came from real estate sales and 11% came from rental income from their malls. 5% came from yung office rentals. And then moving down to yung office rental revenues nila. So 14% of nung 5%, yun yung iririt nila. So it's a very small portion of their revenues na their like sharing to investors through this REIT, diba? So 14% of 5%, so less than 1% lang yun ng total revenues nila last year. Okay. Interesting. So, a REIT, so portfolio overview. We mentioned a while ago it's three office towers. Let's just quickly go through aling office towers to. So the first one is yung Ayala North Exchange building. So vicinity map niya galing to sa prospectus. Kita natin, it's near Makati Med. Uh, I think it's I'm not sure if it's corner ng Ayala mismo, but it's mm. very near, if not corner siya, right? Yep. And then, ayun, they say it's situated on top of a three-story retail podium. So it's actually a mixed-use building, primarily office siya, pero may retail components din. And then meron ding SEDA, may SEDA residences, so 293 serviced apartments. So mixed-use building siya, but mostly office and mostly for BPOs. Baka, okay. ano, something to take note of, itong building na to, fully occupied daw, no? Yes, I think, if not this one, it's one of the others. Pero I think all of the assets they're putting in, at least 97, 98% occupancy. Yeah. So, so, quality ito, assets siya. Ito, fully occupied kasi prime location. Usually, Ayala, high quality naman yung mga buildings nito, one of the best. Yep. And one interesting thing dito, if you're into properties and business, yung uh, PESA accreditation niya. So, meron siyang parang ano, tax benefits ba yan kapag, kapag nag-tenant ka sa kanila? Yun ba yun? Is that how it works? Uh, I think the way it works is you have to be uh, wait lang ah, teka. You have to be PESA accredited first and then I guess that they're trying to cater more to those clients kasi so, not parang wait lang, let me think of how to say this. So, just because you're a tenant in their building, doesn't mean na PESA accredited ka. Pero uh, they pero, are pero one of capable, the buildings. Oh, capable yes. ka within the building. Yeah. Yep. Kasi okay. yung PESA locations in the Philippines, alam ko may mga townships yan in Batangas area. So dun medyo malaki if you want a PESA or the accredited like warehouse or manufacturing plant dun ka sa Batangas most likely. But if you're an office, like if you're a BPO, wala ka namang ganong klaseng physical operations and you want prime location, Ayun, there are a few buildings, I think, in the in the capital in Metro Manila that can cater to that. So this is one of those. Mm, okay. So yeah, may pag may advantage din nga siya. Tapos anong pinaka benefit mga tax easing mga ganun? Yes, sa PESA, I think you have preferential tax treatment right now. Mm, okay. Cool. So you're not subject to yung regular thirty percent. I think may mga five, ten. May mga rules in it, pero basically may benefits ka. So yeah. Dapat kami rin ganun, sakit ng tax. <laughs> ba Sige. Baka eventually, pag nagkikater na kayo sa international uh, ano nga, international customers, di ba? 
Let's see. Let's see. Yeah. So next building they have is Solaris One Building. Ito medyo, it's not as prime of a location because hindi siya along Ayala Avenue, but it's also a PESA accredited building and it meets Grade A specifications. So I guess if you want to really read up on it, pwede namang pundaan ang prospectus or even mga online articles for sure they talk about this a lot. Pero yeah. just to give you a glimpse of anong klaseng assets yung nilalagay nila sa REIT. No? So when you buy units of this REIT, essentially you're partaking in ownership of these office buildings ng Ayala, right? So mostly, I think mostly BPOs din to. And then based, finally... Based sa data, si Solaris fully occupied din siya, interestingly. Yep. Okay. And then finally, they have this McKinley Exchange Corporate Center or yung Telus building. Mm-hmm. I think I see this quite a lot because I live nearby. Ikaw rin yata, di ba? Nadadaanan natin araw-araw yan. Oh, it's a corner Ayala or McKinley. So, oh. yun ang kita talaga. Pag so, very familiar building. Oh. I guess to investors kasi EDSA yan eh, kitang-kita mo rin talaga everyday na dadaanan mo. So just goes to show na itong bibilin mong assets ng REIT, it's really out there. It's a tangible property. So you get to see yung quality. Well, this particular one, it doesn't look like the best one anymore. Diba? Medyo matanda na rin yata itong building na to. Mm. Pero ayun, I think it enjoys high occupancy rin and very prime location. We can't argue with that, no? Two major roads tapos nasa intersection siya. Oh. Tapos, might not be in Makati CBD, might not be in BGC, but it's somewhere in between. So, prime location pa rin, no? Ito, medyo, it, siya yung 98.4% na yeah. occupancy. Tama, tama. So, medyo, ano, at least nako-compare natin na ito mahirap na sa tabi ng highway or ano, yung main roads. Yup, pero still a very prime location. Oh, maganda pa rin, maganda pa rin. <laughs> Parang hard to beat that. <laughs> yeah. So, ngayon, daan na natin siguro like the key points sa summary terms and prospectus ng AREIT. No? So, JC, Sige. if you can... So, eto guys and gals, uh, dadaanan ni Ray yung, yung mga... Dadaanan natin yung mga term sheets, yung prospectus para matuto tayo paano ba natin matigdan ng mabilis. Ano yung hahanapin natin. So, share mo ba, Ray? Or kahit yung sa'yo muna, yung summary terms? Ah, sige, sige, sige. Wait. para lang madaanan natin ang overview before we look at the specific issues or points ah, sige, na sige. worth discussing for this session. Okay. Open ko lang. Ayun. Yep. So, here's my screen. Kikita ba? Yep. Kita. Pero zoom in lang siguro kasi. Sige. So, zoom in ko. Ito siya. So, I think BPI Corp yung... Sila ba yung main ano nito? Yung underwriter? Yep. I believe sila yung main like coordinator, underwriter nito. Mm, so, Ayala to Ayala, no? So, ayun, et, eto yung makikita natin dito, no? So, lahat ng IPO, usually, may may ano yan, may term sheet or offer sheet or prospectus or summary. So, ayun, Ray, ano, run us through. Ano yung mga kailangan natin tingnan dito? So, of course, the first one is sino yung issuer, AREIT Inc. And then, magiging ticker niya is AREIT. So, A-R-E-I-T is literally just that. And then, we have yung indicative offering price range. So they mentioned here it's 25 to 29.5 pesos. Pero I think in a later document, they put it at 30.05 oh, pesos per share. Yung na, no? updated 30, 50 yeah. na. No? So medyo higher end of the range yung pricing nila. Which I guess shows na there's good demand from their book building. So so, so yung initial price range niya na, na, na natatalo nung demand kaya nat, nataas pa yung presyo. Ganun yun usually, di ba? Yes. I think that's the case for this one. Hmm. So even before they offer it, I think yung offer period is July 27 up until I think one week yata yun. They've been talking to mga larger investors na trying to see if may interest sila sa issue na to. So, kaya sila, nagkaka, kaya sila may gauge ng demand ng investors. So, okay. even though they didn't survey us, retail investors, may ideas sila from mga funds. And then, offer structure, kahit, well, base offer. So, they're offering 450 million shares. Tapos, may over allotment option of 10%. And then, primary or secondary. So, I think, may mention ko to kanina, 10% is primary, 90% is secondary. And then yung over allotment na 10%, in case sobrang lakas talaga ng demand, they can issue 10% more. 
So, 10% primary means 10% mm. bagong shares. So, okay. sa e-REIT, magkakaroon ng additional 10% na, na new shares. And yung proceeds ng 10% na yun, diretso kay e-REIT yung cash. Yung 90% secondary, that means si Ayala Land, yung existing shares niya kay e-REIT, ibibenta niya sa public. So, yung proceeds ng 90%, yung cash nun pupunta kay Ayala Land, not kay e-REIT. So, important distinction yun. Ah, uh, okay, okay. So, ito yung sinasabi mo na 90 na siya initially kay Ali. Tapos, yep. mga nganak ng 10, dun sa REITs papasok yung capital na yun. Yung 10% yes. lang. Pero 90% ng proceeds kay Ayala Land talaga. Ah, and then, okay. if magka-over allotment of 10%, kay Ayala Land din yun. So, in secondary <laughs> din siya. Pero, pero may question ako dun. So, hindi ba, hindi masyado nag-benefit si si a rit doon kung kay Ali sa mother pumunta or limitado lang rin yung use case ni mother na parang dapat yung capital gamitin niya rin para kay a rit It's one way to think of it then kasi is si Ayala Land, di ba, magbebenta siya ng part ng assets niya or, mawa, or hindi naman magbebenta pero mawawala sa kanya yung ownership. 49% of it, di ba? Yeah. So, dapat ma-reimburse din siya for losing part of that. So, I'm guessing now the way they structured this particular offering is that they found na 90% going to Ayala Land. Yun yung fair for Ayala Land. Yun yung mako-convince mo si Ayala Land na, sige, ibibenta ko to sa public. Kasi I'm getting this much cash in return. So, okay. I think in this case, I mean, I haven't studied it, pero feeling ko in this case, magkakagain si Ayala Land by doing this um, offering, this public offering. Sige. I, I think yeah. pwede rin natin tigdan yung ano no, yung sa nila gagamitin yung proceeds mamaya on detail. Yep. Sige. So, okay. incentive din yun for them to ayun, to conduct this REIT, di ba? Ito, so, di- dividend yield. Ayan. So, at 25 to 29 pesos, their dividend yield should be around 5.4 to 6.3 percent. So, just to give context, no, mga bonds right now of Jollibee, ICTSI, they're I think they offered recently mga long-term bonds nasa 4.5 to 5%. No? So, yung returns nito, it's just slightly higher than corporate bonds. Kaya, kaya yung minention ko kanina, diba? yung risk return, it's somewhere in between bonds and stocks talaga. You're a bit higher than bonds, but you're not achieving yung 8 to 12% uh, KGAR ng stock price returns, diba? Yeah. Pang, then, pang mas ano, low risk, pero mas consistent. I think... Yep. One thing to take note of here is uh, the higher the price, bumababa yung dividend yield mo, no? the higher your acquisition price. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Re- relative dun sa income, parang ganun. So, yung, eh, dahil tinaas yung, ano, dahil hindi updated tong document na to, di ba? Nag-30-50 mm-hmm. na. Tapos Mas pag in-impute mo pa yung tax, I think yung neto na dividend pumapasok sa mga 4.20%, eh, parang ganun, nasa 4% yeah, something. Yeah, 4.4 or something like that then, yeah. Oo. So that's yeah. something to take note of na pag sa 4% siya, ah, medyo mas mababa ng konti to ah, with what's out there. So we're gonna compare it later on. Mm-hmm. And then, moving on, yung implied market cap, kita natin 25 to 30 billion pesos. So I guess right now, mga nasa 31 plus na yan, 31 billion pesos. So it's hindi to magaan, right? So yung mga traders yan na naghahanap na magta times two to. Uh, for me, huh? I could be wrong, of course. And I'd love to be proved wrong. Pero I doubt na magta times two to on the, on the first week of uh, trading, right? Kasi medyo mabigat. Plus, again, super easy to value yung assets. So, wala masyadong, in, hindi masyadong marami yung inefficiencies na pwede mong i-exploit if that's one way you think of the market. No? Walang speculation. IPO, portfolio, masyadong. we talked about this. Medyo high quality assets. Maganda yung occupancy and oh. location. They're, I think they're all in Makati. No? Yes. Portfolio value, it's around 30 billion pesos. So, more or less in line siya with yung market cap. So, nasa 30 billion pesos yung value ng portfolio. but yung market cap, nasa 30 billion din. Kaya, kaya napakadaling i-value talaga nito. Once you have yung valuation ng portfolio ng office buildings niya, you kind of have the benchmark na rin for the market cap, di ba? And then, particularly for this case, uh, just to point it out, kasi wala siyang debt. So, once mag-take on siya ng debt, it won't be that case naman na one is to one. Okay, just to clarify that. As a REIT, pwede kang umutang. Ganun ba yun? Yes. And actually, I'll, we'll point that out later na this is quite a weird instance. Maybe it's because it's 
initial public offering pa lang na wala oh. siyang debt pero all others most likely may mga 20-30% debt yun. Okay. Interesting. Yep. All right. Ano so, pa? Sponsor, Ayala Land, of course. Yep. REIT Manager. So, a REIT Fund Managers, Inc., that's a wholly owned subsidiary ni Ayala Land. So, basically, si Ayala Land yung sponsor ng REIT and siya rin yung may-ari ng REIT Manager. And don't worry about that. That's a typical structure even internationally. So, siya yung mag-manage ng REIT. And for managing yung REIT, yung REIT magbabayad siya ng management fee sa subsidiary ni Ayala Land. So, yung management fee eventually pupunta din kay Ayala Land, right? Ayan, use of proceeds. So yung 10% na primary shares, it's intended for the acquisition of Teleperformance Cebu. So I think Teleperformance, so most likely BPO tower din to, but located naman in Cebu this time, right? So bibilhin niya yung tower na to from another subsidiary of Ayala Land. So basically, umiikot-ikot lang talaga itong story nito kay, kay Ayala Land, right? So sa kanya rin yung property na bibilhin niya? Yes, gusto lang niyang ipasok sa REIT, essentially. So, parang gusto niya magbenta pa ng more assets sa REIT. Right? Hindi okay. niya kasi pwedeng i-transfer lang yun basta-basta without consideration. So, <laughs> okay, interesting. So, kung interesting. gusto niya magpasok ng property sa REIT, may cash dapat namang gagaling from the REIT to buy those assets, right? Okay, so, so parang ano lang eh, no? parang restructuring lang, kumbaga. Yeah. Essentially, ang nangyayari dito, ang laging pitch pag REIT sa investment banking is it's a way to recycle capital. Recycle okay. capital meaning nag ka ng capital dati, nag-construct ka ng building, now your building is earning, di ba? May income na siya, may recurring income na. Anganak na naman ng kapital yung bago mong yep, building. Kasi ibibenta mo na naman siya. Right? So recycling of capital siya. And that's a really Relief. good point na parang you don't have to tap, you don't have to raise debt, you don't have to dilute your ownership you're just selling your assets in a way, diba? Lupet, lupet. And then, siguro, ano pa bang good point dito? Itong ano, lock up. I think ito na yung next na importante. Ah, okay, siguro. Before we get to that, no, uh, just looking to the future, one of the very first uh, deals I was part of sa investment banking was actually a REIT then. So, this REIT in Singapore was acquiring a US office tower. So, the deal there was because they had to issue more shares so that they can use cash to acquire the property. So, ganun talaga. Whenever you acquire property, you conduct an offering or you raise debt. <laughs> Kasi yung income na nakuha mo from your current properties, pinipay out mo lahat eh, or almost all of it. Kaya yung income na internally generated ng company or ng REIT, it's not enough to buy properties. Yeah. So, whenever you want to add in properties, ayun, mag-raise ka ng equity or mag-issue ka ng debt. Diba? So, lock up 180 calendar days, so half year from on the selling shareholder. So, si Ayala Land, magkakashare siya ng, of course, meron na siyang shares ng A-Read right now. Diba? What this basically says is, Ayala Land cannot sell its shares for at least a, half a year. Right? So, Tama. mga insider-related na, ano, na share, na holders. Yes, so it's only the public who can like trade with, transact with each other for the first half year. I think this is quite standard naman with most oh. public offerings. No? Yeah, kahit, kahit yung rates. IPO stocks, ganito rin halos. Yep. Sigur, yeah. May question ako, Ray. Uh, regarding yeah. sa overall valuation, so tatlong property, anong, mm-hmm. anong parameters nila para ma-value yun? As in, yung NAV ba? Yung asset value ng mga building na yun or something? So, yung portfolio value na pinapakita dito mismo oh, is yun, 30 based billion. on an independent third-party appraiser. So, mm-hmm. Asian appraiser yata yung pangalan. So, it's it's quite a, a, an established appraisal company na rin in the Philippines. They're SEC and PSE accredited. And I, I'm not sure if if it's a requirement, but I believe they're independent of the companies and the properties that they value. Because imagine mo naman if pati yung property value were subsidiary pa para ni Ayala Land. Ang dali nang dayain nun, di ba? Pero in this case, it's not. It's so may, independent. may neutral body para lang ma-insure na ano, fair value or market value para, or close to that, parang ganun. Yes. And then yung parameters, we can get to that a bit later on. Pero I think what they did is, of course, they looked at what we mentioned earlier, yung rental rates, specifically yung projections for rental rates for the next few years. 
as well as yung occupancy right now and for the next few years. Okay, and then okay. once you have those, you get your future income, tapos mga fundamental techniques na to discount yung mga cash flows, stuff like that. Ah, so parang stock rin talaga, no? may projection metrics yes. sila. But in all this right. case, they did it per building and then in add, the, in add yung value of all three buildings and then you have yung portfolio value. So, Ayun, so, so, meaning... so ito, I think we're looking at the the big picture snapshot. Kung, kung baga kung mag invest ka sa a REIT or sa REITs in general, and saan mo ba siya dapat ikumpara in, in the universe of different assets? So ito, ito magandang, ito yung ano, ito yung isang iso isang metric kung paano mo masasabi na worth it ba mag-invest sa REITs dito natin makikita. Yep. And the REITs are for you of course because it's not for everyone then, no. Yeah. So one thing I'd like to start with is an article by April Tan, so highly respected then in the industry, no. Mm. So yeah, she said na final final pricing is still unavailable, but the estimated dividend yield is only 4.6 to 4.9%, which is too low in her op- in her opinion. Kasi kinumpare niya sa 10-year bond yield of 2.8%. 10-year government bond, ah, so super secure, risk-free. It is almost at par with the 4.8% yield of um, bonds ni Jollibee and ICTSI. So although it's fundamentally attractive, it should still provide a higher yield compared to corporate bonds. Since the value of bond coupons is guaranteed, so babayaran for sure ang mga bonds. Or as long as may pera, di ba, babayaran ng bonds on debt. Oh versus dividends ng company which is not sure na babayaran. So yun, she's saying na since medyo may certainty aspect yung bonds and bonds are at 4.8%, itong walang certainty aspect dapat higher than 4.8%. Diba? So risks and returns pa rin. So ang, kung 30 yung, ano, yung, yung yield sa 30, diba? 4.6 so 4.36 ba? 4. Point, yeah, nasa 4.36. Oh, so, so para mag 4.8, dapat nasa 26 pesos to or 27, parang ganun. I would think so. Yep, around that level. Ayun, so, so ano, FYI guys, parang bago tayo pumitik, syempre IPO day, excitement yan kasi first in history, maraming kakagat. Pero ano yan, nothing, nothing really new in terms of IPO after nung initial demand, yung mga hype na tao, yung mga excited bumili. Back to reality yan. So at least alam natin tong benchmark rates natin which yep. tutu- makakatulong sa atin paano ba maghanap ng mga potential buying on dips opportunity and mas ano mas attractive levels. Yep. And in this particular instance, no, the funda is really clear. It's mm-hmm. the first time I've seen na may projections for next two years in a prospectus. Kasi ganun ka, like, ka clear yung visibility mo sa earnings ng company na to or ng REIT, right? Bakit? Kapag mga IPO ba, pag prospectus nila, ilan years usually yung projection? Hindi ba mga 3, 5? May projections ba talaga pag IPOs? Hindi. Hindi ko masyadong nakakakita eh. Ah, so for hindi, hindi parating may ganun. For, I think ah. For, okay. I might be wrong, pero as far as I know, I haven't been seeing that much of those. Minsan, ano, 2 years, 3 years, parang ganyan. Pero yeah, if ever mag papakita ka ng projections, I would think at most two, three years lang yun. Ah, <clears throat> uh, okay. Yep. And then, next part, so ayan, 10-year bookmark, uh, sorry, bo- uh, benchmark rather, rates. So ayan, nasa 2.7% na actually. So this one, 2.8, now 2.7. So medyo, okay, may konting upside, but yeah, right? Ito but, yung uh, ano, ito yung rate na kapag nag-issue ng utang yung government, yan yung ibabayad nila on a 10 year ano no 10 year asset so every year babayaran kanya ng 2 2.7% tama yep and then Ayun. sa 5 year nila diba their yung mino market nila right now retail bond 2.6 something like that diba so eh, ano dagdag ko lang so basically kung si Philippines uh, gusto niyang mangutang magi-issue siya nito nung ano nung government bonds diba yung parang yung RTB or iba pang form ng ano ng securities ng Philippines Tapos, sinong bibili dito? Other countries? Mga big funds? Diba? Parang ganun. Yep. And then, sometimes they offer it to retail institutions as well. Diba? Or retail investors rather, diba? Ah, yeah. Kagaya nitong recent ano, offering. Yep. Okay, okay. Those ones, typically smaller size. Mm. So, moving on to the more interesting parts. No? So, looking at yung average yield eh, of REITs in Singapore, Malaysia, Hong Kong, and Thailand, for Singapore, last year, 63 uh, January, 6.4%. Uh, 
June 2020, umabot siya ng 7% on average. And one reason for that, of course, is lower prices, di ba? Kasi nag-crash nga yung market, bumaba yung prices ng stocks, bumaba rin yung prices ng REITs. Kaya tumaas yung yields. And then, for Malaysia, Hong Kong, Thailand, more or less nasa 5-6% on average, right? Tapos pag i-plot natin yung A-REIT, which is 4.4%, ayun, it's, we see na it's below average, right? Pero one reason for this I'd like to point out is that when we have to, we also have to think of yung average leverage or how much debt yung nasa REITs in other countries. So in other countries, nasa 20 to 35% per, yung leverage nila. In a REITs case, it's 0% right now. Kaya nagda-drag down din talaga ng returns kasi hindi siya gumagamit ng debt. If, for example lang, lagyan natin ng debt si A-REIT, let's say 35%, then we see na it's, yeah, it's more decent na. It's above average yung distribution yield niya. Uh, paano yun? Prenorata mo? As if kung nagamit niya yung, yung leverage, yung capital, parang may boost siya sa, ano, sa income niya, parang ganun ba? Yes. If, for example, uh, mag-issue siya ng debt, tapos yung proceeds nun, gamitin niya pang buyback ng units para maging 35% leverage siya. So, same thing in trading din eh. If, if it might be hard, siguro mahirap nga to understand yung concept hmm. ng leverage on a company level, di ba? Uh, Pero in trading, di ba? Lalo na sa Forex, uh, global markets, you use leverage to increase your returns, di ba? So, you borrow money from your broker to increase your returns. It's the same thing for companies. When they borrow money, they increase returns. In this case, they increase yield. Right? Hmm. So, looking at other stuff naman, ito commercial REITs specifically, so offices in Singapore. So, average nila as of June 2020 is 6.7%. Ayala Land REIT, or sorry, A REIT, nasa 4.4, diba? So, it's still lower than average, which is quite concerning. So, ayun nga, and at this point, no, parang we tend to agree na if ma-price siya at 30.05, that's quite expensive. Parang ang baba ng returns. Kung i-base mo on a regional perspective. Yeah. Lalo na, we're faster growth or higher growth than Singapore, di ba? Shouldn't we be giving higher returns as well? Actually, actually. Parang kung mas, ano ka, mas spotlight market ka or mas sunshine, ano ka, no? Parang nasa iyo yung spotlight. Yep. Dapat mas exciting ka, kaso hindi ganun yung pinapakita. Yeah. We should be comparing ourselves more with Malaysia and Thailand. Oh. Kaso, so, yan. Okay. Problem Malaysia, is Thailand. Yung second and fourth bars. Hmm. So, medyo mas mababang versus, pero it's weird, no? Pero I guess it's also a function of leverage kasi. Because when you look sa bottom chart, highly leveraged yung mga Singapore companies. And it's because they have better ratings, better access to, to debt capital. Mm. Okay, then, so average yield dun sa, ano, dun sa apat na yun, parang nasa 5.2%? Per, uh, 5%? Five? Yeah, yeah, 5 to 5.5%, no? Okay. So, we so, should expect na rates so yung in the presyo, Philippines. Yung presyo ni, ni A-REIT para umabot ng 5, 5%, anong tansya mo? 24? 23? Baka nga 25s. Without, kasi, yun talaga, for me, ah, one problem with A-REIT, since it's, yun, yeah, it's a new issue once, it's that it, it doesn't have leverage yet. Mm. So maybe in the future... Uh, when they infuse more assets, most I think uh, I think what they're going to do is they're going to issue debt na to buy to buy assets for the REIT. Because if mag equity pa sila lalo, parang <laughs> it's your returns is not that good na. Oh, medyo sagad na. Okay. Sige, and let's then, see. Ito, commercial REITs, so office REITs. So Singapore yung ginawang comparison kasi sila yung pinakamaraming available REITs. Mm. Yung Malaysia, Thailand kasi konti lang yung office REITs nila. And then, ito, another aspect to look at, yung NAV, binansin natin ito kanina, 33.3% yung net asset value. Basically, ano yung book value, ano yung worth ng um, assets, ng buildings, minus yung very few liabilities ni A-REIT, 33.3%. So, if 30.05 yung offer price, discount niya would be around 9.8%. Average discount in Singapore offices, office REITs is 5.2%. So, okay. I guess when you look at this metric, parang, okay, we're pricing it quite cheap nga. Pero it, you have to play with both metrics kasi. 
its yields and yung nav ano, valuation. Yep. So if you want higher yields, you're going to have to settle for a higher discount to your nav, diba? If you want to offer higher yields. Pala. And then one thing to point out then, since we mentioned a while ago, focus tayo on dividends, diba? Pero may capital appreciation component din to. Uh-oh. So yung bottom chart, January 2020, average premium, not discount, uh, premium to nav was 14%. So in a span of six months, in a span of one market crash, from 14% premium, naging 5% discount yung prices. So it's affected by the market din talaga. And of course, yung fundamentals within the company. And mm-hmm. within the read, right? So yeah, that closes our session on uh, no, our, the slides I prepared for this read analysis. Ayun, so uh, if you want thanks to don't raise quest, Look- ba, or... Ano, siguro last part. So uh, ano, ganda nung comparisons, no. Ang pinaka-importante doon yung yung nav nandoon kung gusto mo tumingin on a valuation perspective. Pero yung yield comparison, yun yung pinaka as an investor, yun yung pinaka ano eh, 'di ba? Yun yung yun yung main reason bakit ka papasok halos eh, 'di ba? It's yields talaga. Yes. So oh. when you look at stocks, they talk about PE. What's the what's the PE multiple for this one? Is it expensive? For REITs, it's yields talaga. So so looking at the yields, diba, yun yung point nga ni Ms. April, okay siya, uh, fundamentally exciting, ayala, first read, pero comparing to what's out there, yung 4. 4.36 to 4.5, 4.6% na return, halos ka-level niya lang yung bonds na nilabas ni Sinion, Jollibee and ICT ba? Yep, tama. So mas ano, kumbaga mas mas ano, mas low risk yung bonds na yun. So so yun yung direct ano niya direct comparison niya. So that's something to take note of. So ano, kumbaga kung trader perspective ka, tinitingnan mo yung risk reward mo, baka at yung top of the range ng IPO, yung yung presyo nila na 30, kahit umakyat yan ng konti, alam mo na yung yields medyo ano, mm-hmm. mas maraming mas magandang option. So baka saglit lang yung initial run niya tapos maghanap ulit ng stabilization at lower levels. Kumbaga Kung, kung di ka naman nagmamadali, baka pwede pang maghanap ng lower levels. Baka mag-correct rin yan. Or yung, yung top, yung price range na 30, baka nga 27 lang or ano, 26. Let's see. Who knows? Hindi, na, hindi natin alam. Siyempre, first to. Maraming excitement pag first, eh, di ba? Yep. And then, actually, a good point about this is a lot of other companies are looking to offer their REITs as well. So, mm-hmm. they're just waiting for a REIT for Ayala Land to be the first one to test the market tapos afterwards sila susunod so there might be good opportunities then in the future and it's going to be the same analysis it's going to be yield nav and yung properties rental rates occupancy